Do you agree or disagree with the godfather of the manosphere with his assessment of hypergamy? Well, I'm I'm part of one of the only evolutionary psychology labs that uh, uh, that ever even considers hypergamy or looks mm. into it. If you want to study this sort of topic, you need to define your variable pretty precisely before you go into it. So one specific question, which I think you'll get an affirmative answer, it's like, do women prefer to date men who have more money than them, right? Who have better financial prospects than them? If that's your definition of hypergamy, then it's like, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty well-supported idea. If you look at looks, right, now it gets more complicated because just from behavioral data, it seems that women are willing to loosen up their standards on looks a lot more than men, certainly for long-term dating. For short-term dating, men and women are more similar in the sense that we both aim for like the best looking person possible. But the difference is that men are willing to drop their standards in a way that women aren't. So I think that hypergamy is uh, one issue that I have with the red pill is that it's like, look, we can talk about that. We can have a conversation about mm -hmm. the idea that women are more selective and have a preference to date up on social hierarchies, right? We can talk about that and, and discuss the evidence for and against it. But we can't just say hypergamy for every dating situation ever, right? Because it's like, if it's hypergamy when the guy's better looking, but she's making more money, but it's also hypergamy when she's better looking and he's making more money, then it's, it's, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah, like, no, uh, every, I, I fully agree. And I, yeah, there are absolutely outliers. I mean, I've had conversations with lots of people where it's like, you know, you sort of dive down the rabbit hole of, um, you know, dating and hypergamy and how uh, men and women prioritize, uh, mates and you'll always have that random uh you know gal pop out and she'll be like but wait that doesn't apply to me because i'm a lawyer making three hundred thousand dollars a year and my husband's a stay-at-home dad and you know he doesn't even work and uh you know like you'll always get those in any sampling i'm well okay I, so i i've spoken unclearly i'm not pointing to exceptions to prove that that's not how that's not how I that's not how I even think about topics. I too think about averages, right? I would never yeah. if, if there's an average trend, right? Like I've said in this conversation that the average person cares about looks before almost anything else when they're dating. Yeah. I'm not going to point to my buddy. I'm not going to point to my buddy and say, oh, he doesn't care about looks when he's dating. Therefore, it's not true. That's not that's not how averages work. On the hypergamy point, I was I was, I was making I was making a very specific point, which is that if it's hypergamy, Right, hypergamy, when a woman dates a guy who's better looking than her, but makes less money. But it's also hypergamy when a woman dates a guy who makes more money, but is worse looking than her, right? Then we could flip the situation with the same evidence, right? And say men are hypergamous, right? Which is, which, which sounds because the... it's like, oh, you, look at that low life, like, yeah. right, right? Like he's using his looks and trading it for a woman who has more money than him, right? And then we could also do the flip thing and say, oh, look, he's being hypergamous. He's dating a woman who's better looking than him, but makes less money, right? So, so it's the same set of data points. And we're just saying hypergamy, hypergamy, hypergamy. And it's like, we ha okay, we have to select a variable, right? If you want to talk about this in a serious scientific way, you have to select a specific variable, right? And then assess whether that specific point is true. And so it depends what type of hypergamy we're talking about. If we're talking very specifically about money, then I agree. It's like, yes, women generally exhibit a preference for men who are making more money than themselves. Mm. And they have a, a high preference for that. Yeah, I think this is where you see things slightly differently because, I mean, um, you know, to me, you know, exception to rule doesn't disprove the rule. It's just an outlier. And I think, you know, on a balance of probabilities, if the vast majority of women, uh, OK, so here's a really good example. So no, but I'm not saying I may I'm not saying the exception to the rule thing. I, 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 I just clarified that I'm not saying that. No, no. But just hear me out for a second. So as an example, like if I were to state that 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 women are are hypergamous and they tend to marry and date across on the social economic scale. Yeah, I've read research papers. Yes, I've read, you know, some Evo Psych and, you know, followed some useful content. But I've also been a private lender for a number of years, too. And as a private lender, I have to look at credit applications. And on the credit applications, it has their job and it has what their income is. And I've seen in the vast majority of cases when people are applying for uh, financing, private mortgage, you know, whatever it happens to be, uh, Mr. almost always makes a lot more money than Mrs., Right, but so, wait, I, I I don't understand. Do you, do you think I I you're not disagreeing with me? I just but, said that. No, I'm agreeing. But what I'm saying is, like, in the context of hypergamy, and I think you know one of the things that we wanted to talk about in this podcast as well is the disagreements, you know, with the red pill and the mano swamp, is that um, I think it's more of like a broad statement where it's just you know women are generally hypergamous. Right? Do you understand my gripe 
is with the, is with what you just said, which is that like, oh, hypergamy as a general term, hypergamy as a general phenomenon. And I'm like, okay, well, empirically, that's not good enough. Mm-hmm. We need to define the term and then assess its truth based on that spe- the specific variable. So you could say, but women I mean, you're have, more of a like, statistician, if you were, though, if you were to, right? Like, if you were to say, if you were to say very specifically, with regards to with regards to finances, women are generally hypergamous, right? They want to date someone who makes more money right. than themselves. I would say yes, right? Um, but a lot of the red pill guys, right? They put everything to hypergamy. So when a woman dates a guy who's, you know, like you said, you you, you mentioned the, the kind of anecdotal idea of like a guy who's a hot criminal, right? You labeled that as hypergamy as well. And it's like, eh, is it? It's like, now we're talking about a different type of thing. We're talking about well, she's you know, women's short-term, short, women's increased yeah. short-term preferences for looks, which is exactly. not, that doesn't really fit with the hypergamy story. And that's what annoys me about a lot of these, you know, red pill twerps is just talking about like, oh, well, everything's hypergamy, everything's so hypergamy, made, though, everything. It? No, it's not, a, it's not, I'm not saying that it disproves the hypergamy point that we mm-hmm. just talked about with money. I'm saying that it, that a lot of the red pill guys, they label that as hypergamy as well. And that doesn't fit. So, so let me uh, present this option to you. Uh, you know, woman's at a bar. She has 10 men to select from. Uh, some of them are successful, some are not. One guy just got out of jail. He looks like a total chat. He's a 10 out of 10. He's a good looking guy. He looks like you. He's got the hunter eyes, right? And Oh, stop it. But, but he hasn't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, and yeah. he's sleeping on his sister's couch. She may prioritize him over the other options that night just because he's the best looking guy as far as options go. Yeah, okay, you're talking hypergamy, hypergamy, hypergamy. And then the situation that you just described in the bar where it's like, okay, so she chose the guy who's lowest status, least amount of money, right? Lower status than her, lower education level than her yeah. because he's good looking. And it's yeah. like, yeah, looks for short-term mating looks really matter. And that's not, I mean, some of these, some of these guys, they'll be like, oh, that's the, that's the other side to hypergamy. And it's like, okay, everything's hypergamy, right? Everything's hypergamy. Congratulations. You can never mm. be wrong because, because you've already <laughs> determined that everything's hypergamy, right? Right. But, I mean, it's just like, it's just, a, it's just a, it's just a very simple minded way, way of viewing the world. You have to pick. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I think you're right about that. 